this is Clone Wars Weekly. I'm your host, Ronan, with... Bittil. And QQ Films. And we are here this week with a double feature, here to review A Necessary Bond and Secret Weapons. So, first off, what did we all think of A Necessary Bond? I think it was a good start. Yes, it was a very fitting conclusion to the already epic Young Jedi arc. Yeah, I agree. This, this arc is definitely one of my favorites the Clone Wars has ever done. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, it, that came as a total surprise. Um, some here may know that I was not fond of uh, Season 5 trailer. and But, wow, this was just something amazing that came out of nowhere, but I loved it. I don't think it was even in any of the trailers. No, it wasn't. Was it? No, it wasn't. It was just, like, randomly there. And this was supposed to be the Clovis arc, I think, or it was supposed to be the Clovis arc and then the Maul arc. And it kind of, like, kind of screwed us, and it was like, we're not doing this. We're going to do this. Because <laughs> we're Lucasfilm. Well, we like to see I'm you. completely happy they decided to do that. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad they did that. You know, Save well, the all stuff for like later on when the season's going to get darker and more depressing. Let's save it for that. Um, yeah. I can't say that I'm particularly interested in the Clovis arc, but uh, <gasps> whatever. It's going to be an arc. It's going to be awesome. It's Clone Clovis stinks. Oh. I mean, sure, he's probably better than Anakin and Padme, but, like, yes. that, oh, well, he, that's not uh, by much. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about Necessary Bond. The best part was Grievous. Oh, guns blazing as the lightsaber's going all the throwing Hondo and kicking ass. I'm... And... This has definitely been um, most exciting uh, Grievous episode yet. I was trying to get you to rage there, but you didn't even rage. Why didn't you rage? Uh, Why well, didn't rage? It's true. Like Grievous pretty much stinks. I'll have you know that. I'm not a fan of his character. Uh, was... He runs away all the time. Uh, He's a cowardly uh, general. To... Uh, haters, haters, come for us, bro. We even got a fairly cool fight with him and Ahsoka, which um, was entertaining to watch for sure. <laughs> Great. It was good. I mean, you know, Grievous kind of kicked Ahsoka's ass. Ahsoka kind of kicked Grievous' ass. Well, no, she didn't really kick Grievous' yeah, ass. She got her face. She got her face kicked in by Grievous' foot. Just like, Oof. That was awesome. Plus, there was actually a feel of genuine um, worry for the characters with Grievous in a more dangerous form like that. Yeah, you know, that doesn't usually for sure. happen, you know. Because Grievous sort of chickens out and runs away like a little chicken. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get so much rage for this episode. I guess we are. But, <coughs> Corey. <laughs> but, um, what? otherwise, the episode is just, it was one of those things where not all the characters got to have any more development in the episode, but... It certainly was entertaining to watch, and it was by far one of the best finales for an arc that we've seen, probably next to Carnage of Krell. Um, a, my major complaint about it was that Gennady didn't get to do a whole lot, but she did get a cool scene of her um, holding up, like, and Gunji, which... Be happy she didn't and die. The, yes, and she didn't die, so major plus for that. Oh, no. Yeah, I heard. I read somewhere on Facebook. Someone was like, oh, "Hondo's being overused this season." I respectfully disagree. It's, we do. We need more Hondo. Much, much more Hondo must be required. It's hard to say that a character's being overused when you enjoy his presence every time. Maybe he's yeah. a Hondo hater. Could be. How can you hate a Hondo? It's kind of like no, it's, like a... it's impossible to hate a Hondo. My voice is just like all over the place today. It's like, whoa. Yes, it is, sir. <laughs> but I don't know. I loved Hondo in this episode. Although he did kind of shift from really, really bad to really bad to good and then to really, really good. And, was, and then to semi bad, then to good again. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I guess it, it, but it works because his mood is based on, uh, what is it, credit, uh, some crap like that. And then, so I guess it kind of makes sense, you know, he kind of. Had to do um, it. Yeah. One thing I I liked was 
that particular look he gave Katuni at the end of the episode. It, it what was that about? It's like you, you Jedi are all right, sort of thing, and it sort of leads me out like to, to wonder: Will uh, Will Hondo rescue these younglings during Order sixty six, and maybe provide them with uh, cover? <laughs> no. For I know you don't think so, but wouldn't that be such a cool story? Uh, it would, but Hondo, d- do it. Why would he do that? Because he's there's no problem. The best there is no problem. The show is created with many different layers to his uh, personality. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, there's no profit in it. Maybe if they agree to like, obviously there'd be some sort of comedic like, thing that he'd be like, "Okay, I'll take the credits." But um, I think that. That was genuinely something to show that deep down Hondo may have a good heart to him, which I know you're not a fan of because you think of Hondo as just the pure scoundrel. But what? No, but that's not his move is based on profit. Uh, yeah, that's the one. So I, I, I honestly that's... think that that would be one of the most amazing directions they could go with it. Yeah, but be interesting. Will there be a time to explain that story. I hope. If they do an Order 66 thing, they will. Yeah, probably. I think that would be amazing. We could have the younglings survive I mean, Order 66 and um, perhaps be even used for future Star Wars stories. We've got these new movies coming up. Hey, anyone listening to me? Wouldn't that be great? I think those are going to be legacy no, 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 stories. No, no, they're not. Uh, well, they did calling them the sequel trilogy, right, so... No, sequels to the original. Yeah, I know. So it's it it's gonna be legacy. Well not legacy, but the stuff with like the Liu's and Vong and Jason and first of all, no, because all right. the stuff with the Yu and Vong and Jason, as you're saying, would involve Luke Skywalker, oh. Han Solo, uh Yeah, but they said that they're gonna bring Luke back and didn't they? You you're the one who said that Kiata Mundi died sometime during the Clone Wars. Who said that? You did. No, 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 that wasn't it. You said that Dengar died. I never Guess said you that. did. I never said Dengar no, died. No, not during the Clone Wars, but at, during one of the... Oh, you're right, the Boba Fett. Boba Fett was all like... Yeah, you said that Boba Fett had killed him. Someone told me Boba Oh, you're wrong. So, this is about as much as I can trust your opinion... <laughs> but, 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 but the news, the news is, 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 is there everywhere. Is nothing. You There's nothing that we currently know about these new Star Wars movies other than the fact that there'll be sequels. Yeah. But if they do involve that stuff so with Jason and Jania... ...is recon some of the other things and focus on some of the... Uh, I think you're going to try to at least save some of the stuff that they... Uh, messed around with in Star Wars. Right, we're getting a bit off track. Probably. Mm, yes, that usually seems to happen in our podcast. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, so, this is Harry Bond. Right. Uh, Hondo. He's, he's, he's got like an acorn hat. What he does. No, it looks more like a... No, um, it's an acorn. It's not an acorn. It's an acorn hat. No, not an acorn. It's, it's the top of an acorn. So let's move on uh, to the ratings, crap. shall That's we? I did yeah, the ratings. Let's see, necessary bond. I would give it out of ten. I'd have to give it uh, nine. I'd give it a nine. I'm he, going to give it a. He's going to give it eight point five. Oh, why so low? Oh wait, that's low. Out of ten. Well, I mean, it wait. is out of ten. Yeah, it's wait. not too bad. Just one of what your yeah, um, complaints were about the episode that would get it lower like that. Yeah, Quentin. Yeah, Quentin. What did you not like? What do we have to rage? At? I, what, what I don't Quentin know. Was? Well, if you're going to rate it lower, you must have, have some like? sort of thoughts. That's sort of the point of this podcast. Yeah, Quentin. What is this? I don't have any reason. I don't know. I'm just... I don't know what a bad rating is. I'm new here. It's not like a bad rating. I'm just wondering what you would consider a strike against it that would cause it to be an 8 point within a 10. I'm just going to give it a 10. <laughs> okay, I'll say my... The only thing I... Uh, the only reason I didn't give it a perfect 10 was maybe because 
Um, the whole thing of Ahsoka joining with the Pirates, it just kind of happened very quickly, and the Pirates didn't seem to Well, the like, Pirates didn't have a choice. True, but I mean, it just... Dialogue a there quick, seemed a little... They do forced, have a yeah. short but, I mean, you know, to make this episode. So. Exactly, yeah. So that's like that's like the only minor concern. But the whole episode just looked visually like awesome. I love the chase scene in the beginning. I remember last week I was like wondering how, like, you saw Hondo and his men like getting on these ships, but then you just like kind of saw Ahsoka and them just like riding like there was no one behind them. Well, now you see that chase scene, so that fills my void. So well done, episode. And, well done. And yes, many empty voids were filled, sir. So. <laughs> In regard to my rating, um, I would give it a 4.8 out of 5. <laughs> 4. I, it's, it was darn near one of the best episodes we've ever seen. The only strikes I can make to it is that I felt like certain characters didn't get as much to shine. Um, but I'm sure that is because of the smaller time format they had. So, great episode, great arc... Well done. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now we move on to secret weapons. Dun, dun, dun. <gasps> okay, I just want to start off by saying I loved the hell out of this episode. It I know, was right? like it it's just I thought it was, this arc was gonna be really bad, but if they keep going in this pace, I think it's gonna be another one of those arcs that just like sets the bar really high. For the show? Fixing the series. Yeah, it was awesome. Plus whack. <laughs> this may very well be one of the most bizarre Clone Wars episodes we've had in a long time. Um, Again with the bizarre? Batil thought that that circus episode with an, um, Bound for Rescue was That bizarre. was bizarre. Well, this one? You have like a... Uh, yeah, there was a circus. Well... Wait, well, what? this one, this one was more so. I was blown oh. away by how over the top it was. The cheese. Jeez. Oh yeah, like when Whack walked into a Did wall, for instance. Part? Oh, that was actually. I didn't say that it was bad. That's In fact, they need relief. In fact, it was great. I loved this episode as well. Um, but. <laughs> I cannot deny that it was bizarre. Um, it was certainly not what I was expecting for the droid arc. But now that I think about it, it's very fitting. Um, first of all, we've got this general. Mr. Small General. Uh, not General. Uh, it's Colonel. It's Colonel. It's Colonel. Captain. Captain. We'll call him Captain. So. So, he was Captain. He was like the little military guy who overreacts. Oh, that's and a very over-the-top voice. And... Uh, who drives around in the cutout head of a droid? That was very. Dark. It was I mean, like... also um... <laughs> the Parwan uh, scientist, uh, Doctor Goombamuji. I love Wapa. that we've gotten to see another one of those. As uh, Daron was one of my favorite oh. elements from the Hardeen arc. And now that I think about it, <laughs> um. The, this arc is written by the same person who did the Hardeen arc. I wonder if there was any coincidence. <gasps> I guess. But this is like his redemption. This is him pulling himself from the ashes. What do we think of D. Bradley Baker as that uh, Parwan scientist dude? And he's was D. Him? Baker. But, yeah. He plays Echo. God, he's, he's D. Baker. He, uh, like, all of his performances are, like, spot on at Absolutely. this point. To basically say anything about it, they just keep basically saying what's been said already. The dude's, like, legendary. He's Echo. He's Neo. Enough with the <laughs> Echo! <laughs> There's an, Echo. an element that I really I liked to this episode that was kind of touching. It was whack. Um, it was that they... Oh decided to bring that uh, fried droid back to fit, repair him later. Yeah, I thought they were just going to leave no him man there. left behind yeah. concept is something I wish they would do more often in the Clone Wars rather than just with some droids. Yeah. This was, it was really 
I mean, the droid didn't have anything. I mean, it could have revived his memory banks. It's not like anything happened. But he's a bucket. He he's, he did but nothing. Exactly. He served as both but he was, but still, exactly. they cared. And that's something that they should <laughs> do more often in the show. We're actually exactly. Living that was what I was trying to get at. They're not going to do with living characters, you silly. Yeah, they hate people. <laughs> uh, so. They hate the humans. And aliens. They like droids, That though. is very true. Meat bats. So. Droids are always there, but then if it's like a human or alien, it's just like, nah, you can die. He's going to die. good. <laughs> uh, feeble-minded. Oh, wait, there was Toto. But they brought him back. <laughs> but he's a droid. Yeah, he- yeah, but... He's a droid, so that's why they brought him back. Good point. Hence what we just kind of... What? And then there was my favorite, absolute favorite aspect of this episode. Guess what it was. Guess. Guess. Black 47. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. He's so awesome. If you mix HK-47 with Iron Man and Biddle... I was, I was watching this episode, and I was like, That is Batil! That's, that's oh. him in Star Wars. What? You think they'd put me in an episode? I'm totally going to like start talking like him. It's not even going to be funny anymore. I'm just going to be like, we'll be doing this. And I'll be like, I love the hell out of him. How the little general colonel thing kept calling him Cyclops. That was... Um. <laughs> it's pronounced colonel. It's, it's captain. Captain. It's captain. It's captain now. But, but then, and then, like, the whole, that scene where they're, like, it's in the anti-gravity room, and he's, like, doggy paddling in the air, that was, that is so what I would have I, done. I really liked this character, too. He, because the other droids don't really have any personality, um, we get to focus so, almost entirely on Whack and the, uh, Captain. <laughs> Whack. Cap- well, I just realized something. R2-D2 is one of the most vulgar characters in Star Wars. Everything he says is bleeped out. Ha ha. Oh my god. <laughs> it's uh, like the dark wall being completely naked. We can't really say that now because he's going to get like new legs and he's going to put pants on and a shirt. Quentin, oh, what did you think oh, of Whack? I believe that he was a very talented and... Well, misrepresented droid until, um, all around the ending, where he was, like, helping the colonel. It's his real... It's real the speech. colonel. It, it's colonel. It's colonel. However, um, yeah. He had, on my scale, he has a 10. One thing I, one he thing I was wondering was, how did a pit droid end up being someone that the Jedi have uh, known before? Um, obviously he's supposed to be like some sort of pilot, but when we, when we were first introduced to pit droids, I they're guess. pit droids. They are like meant for racing and, uh, stuff. Yeah, and he, I love the part when he just like trolls those two super battle droids and he just like locks them in the closet. I loved that. <laughs> that was classic. That was so awesome. He's like, there are no questions, that is what I like, and he just, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's a... Guys, I'm gonna kill somebody. Don't worry, he won't. I yeah, don't... He I, will just re- rebuild him. But, but typical, he'd be like a one droid. They'd just like leave him there to die, and then I'd have to be like... Oh, I feel your concern. Oh. Um, I had the same yeah. sort of you worry... Know Gnody was I, yeah, I had the same sort of worry when uh, Gnody was around, and... They, they weren't going to kill a youngling. That I knew they weren't going to kill her. It was, oh, That's what I, I know that they're not going to kill but, Whack. Because, okay, but I don't know now. Well, see, I had the same thing. I had the same thing you're going no. through right now, all right? Oh, but look, he's the very over-exaggerated, hyperactive character that you... He, they kind of build him up as annoying, and then he does something self-righteous, and he, he sacrifices himself, and I'm like, oh, no, yeah, Whack, look, why did you do that? he's pretty much the only character existing in this arc right now, okay? No, they have the they have Colonel. Yes, yeah, so I mean I expect the the Colonel to die more than Whack because Whack is the main character. There's no denying it. R two, he's as a cameo. The other droids have no personality. Um, it's 
down to those two, and Wack is potentially the main character. So I highly doubt that he's going to die. With Gennody, I felt it was more likely because she's a Rodian and has a much smaller part compared to some of the others. But that she didn't. So the, I highly doubt that our wonderful friend Wack47 is going to die. It was no the, one. I, 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 no, no, no. But, but, I mean, look, logically... Once again... You might die. I don't trust point. anyone. The arc is over and he's still standing there like, okay. Yeah, let's not judge till the arc's over. But you know who else might just go... <laughs> is that new clone commando. Ah, oh, yes, Gregor. Oh, so, can't just kill a clone commando. Dude, they brought in Colt and they killed him like the next episode he was in. Yeah, but then they redeemed it with Echo. He died in the next season he was in. No, that was the same, the same season. season. <laughs> You're proving my point. But then there's Fives. He's still um, around. For now. I don't have high hopes of Fives, but... Um, uh, he, to season 5, he's going to go... Wouldn't that be oh. ironic? Season 5. I've been saying that this whole time. Season 5, and that's... You know, the season 8 oh, is I'm, I'm going to have to see what they do with Gregor. But they need to make his death the best. Watch him do the same thing as Echo. He just like runs out into battle and it's just blown up. <laughs> Gregor, um, I have no idea how he's going to fit into this arc. Uh, I've seen the preview clips, but um, otherwise, like, I'm. This was a good setup episode. I still prefer the gathering in regards to setup episodes, but this one took sort of a childish and kitty concept as well as execution, but made it work. Okay. There was a lot of stuff to this. There was the concept of learning trust. There was the concept of um, getting over your own arrogance, working together. Humility's daily defense against humiliation. It, yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's get our rating down for this episode. Yeah. A thirteen point eight out of ten. Why? Because they emulated my personality into well, a droid. If Corey was able to give a question mark out of ten, then I won't deny yours. <laughs> um, I'm gonna give nine point nine because I never like direct numbers. All right. Well, I am gonna give it a four out of five. I didn't like it as much as like the gathering, but I can't fault this episode for what it was. Um. A lot of people may be hating it because of the sort of the kitty concept, the cheese to it, the very bizarre. Um, but I said, get you exactly. To Star Wars is not defined by any particular feeling not or genre. Or uh, Star Wars, it's defined by story. Right. Stop trying to Christopher Nolan things with your darkness obsession. I agree with everything <laughs> you said. There. People don't seem. People don't seem to get this. Um. Is this crazy? So, it was a great episode, uh, good character development, um, that's what I'm, it, it was great. Yeah? Was so that it? Well, that was, uh, it, but that doesn't mean we have to stop talking about the episode. Oh. Well, no, you have to kind of, you know, yeah, conclude yeah. it. Ooh, ooh, let me conclude it, I'll conclude it, let me, let me, come on, let me conclude you it. You may conclude it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Wait, what do I say? And that was it for Clone Wars Weekly. Tune in next week for another episode. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I totally got it. Okay, 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 okay.